Hey. We met a fucking Olympian handball player. He looked like an accountant. He came into this office. We interviewed him. Hey. He looked like an accountant. Put in my take, YouTube, like and subscribe, like and subscribe, best podcast in the world, like and subscribe, like and subscribe, like and subscribe. On today's part of my take, we have NBA champion Pat Connaughton, an awesome, awesome interview with Pat about winning the title, Giannis, his career, really great stuff. Uh, we also have some Olympic talk because the Olympics have started, but fuck the IOC and fuck NBC and their coverage of it, whatever. Uh, we have Aaron Rodgers now is to the point of posting cryptic Instagram stories. Uh, who's back of the week? A packed Monday show for you. And we're brought to you by our friends at TickPick. TickPick is the original no-fee ticket site that guarantees the best prices on sports and concert tickets Who's back of the summer? Games and concerts with fans in the stands. That is what is back. We love fans in the stands. And Tick Pick, no, not Dick Pick, Tick Pick with a T needs to be your go to for tickets for live events like baseball games, like concerts. We got a bunch of concerts coming up. Make sure you go to Tick Pick. Tick Pick actually invented NFTs when they were the first site to offer no fee tickets. See what I did there, boys? This has saved fans over $55 million in counting. People accept the bullshit service fees on tickets that sites charge. You probably don't even realize it, but TickPick's whole business model eliminated those, so don't waste time checking multiple sites to compare ticket prices because TickPick is the most fan-friendly ticket site there is because they guarantee the best prices on live event tickets. So... TickPick should be your first choice to buy tickets because they save fans money by never charging any service fees ever. And go to visit TickPick.com slash take. So it's TickPick.com slash take. Use code take today for $10 off your first order on live event tickets. And don't forget to download their app and use code take for $10 off. So TickPick.com slash take. You get $10 off and there are no hidden fees that all the other places charge. TickPick.com slash take. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by TickPick. TickPick.com slash take. Use it right now. Get Put in code take. You get $10 off your tickets. Fans are back tickpick.com slash take today is monday july 26th and we officially suck at basketball i've got olympic fever big cat well we we suck at five on five basketball. five on five and we didn't we did and and our men's three on three team didn't qualify no when i think of when you say we suck at basketball my mind automatically goes to women's three on three, three, on three. But, yeah we're fucking dynasty in that one three on three uh i watched an entire game between belgium and japan on saturday morning it was one of the worst sporting events i've ever witnessed it looked like a saturday morning pickup game i then tweeted out a clip of it and the ioc in their infinite wisdom i incorrectly said it was nbc it is the ioc uh doesn't want anyone sharing any olympic clips pictures anything because god forbid anyone talks about the olympics and these random sports that you stumble upon that you're like, oh, this is fun. No, they want them. It's like Fight Club. Don't actually never never talk about the Olympics. Do First rule. Do you think that when they're they're selling advertisements to potential sponsors, they're like, hey, just so you know, all the videos that will be coming of any sport, they're all going to come from our account. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about spending money on our official tweets and then having Barstool Big Cat tweet out yeah. an advertisement to go watch the show that you're sponsoring. Yeah, because uh, I I can't understand. Like you could, I could sit down with the head of the IOC, the head of NBC, and I would sit there for the rest of my life waiting for them to give me a, an actual explanation as to why tweeting a 20-second clip of a random sport like handball, some dude got smoked in the face, I the saw goalie, yeah, but yeah. it actually is technically a penalty, well, which also, is the pussification of handball. Yeah, no, that's not my handball. Back yeah. in the 90s, handball, when like men played handball, yeah. that shit was like, that's how you scored most of your exactly. goals. Exactly. In the bad boy era. But, but that, yeah, that clip, uh -huh. which you see it and you're like, oh, handball's on, let me go watch it. Nope. 
Do not talk about it. I would respect it more if the IOC sat down and they're like, you know what? We'll let anybody share clips as much as they want, except those bastards from part of my take. Yeah, those, that's fair. Those guys, we're going to DMCA the shit out of them the second they put something up. Way to do, way to go, IOC, the Olympics. And then, uh, listen, the M I, I guess it's good that they put the U.S. game on, on the cock at 8 a.m., I would have probably, you know, put the most popular sport, the thing that people want to watch the most in America, maybe on NBC proper. But it turned out to be a favor because we do suck at basketball. France beat our ass in a way, way that I actually, like, if you had told me before that France just beat us, I, I'm like, okay, you know, they're pretty good. You know, Rudy Gobert, Batum, whatever. Fournier. Boris Diaw not walking through that door, Yabu. but he was. Yeah. Uh but no, we actually were leading with like three minutes left and totally blew it. And the France had like a 16-2 run to to win the game. That was a France legacy game. Yeah. There was also a sequence at the end that looked like your three-on-three clip where the U.S. just couldn't make a shot. They yeah. Had like yeah. three wide-open threes in a row and they just bricked everything. And Vince Carter was on the call, which was supposed to be like another dunk on France because of his famous dunk. And then it was reversed. Here's just an idea. Maybe at some point USA Basketball should consider – Putting the best basketball players on the team and mm. not the best athletes on the team. Yeah, a team. A team. And then they should get that guy from Miracle to coach it, or at least some guy wearing a plaid jacket. Yes. And then have him abuse the players before the games until they reach a point where they almost break, but then all fall in love with the coach. I really do think that the Wisconsin Badgers could win the gold medal because I, it does feel like that's the style of basketball that it takes. I was actually thinking that probably the worst NBA team yeah. would have a better chance at winning the title than this group right now. Just that we practicing have. together? Yeah, just like knowing each other's names. I yeah, think the Houston that, Rockets were really That's bad. like 60% of the job. Were they the worst? Yeah. Houston Rockets with John Wall on the team, yeah. I think, could win. It's and the, it's the birthday curse. The birthday curse of Kevin Durant when he wasn't his birthday and they sang, they SVP'd him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't his birthday. That's and they saying happy birthday. No, I like that. That's why you have JaVale McGee on the national team. Yeah. So that you can just do pranks that make no sense. How about that reporter? Did you see that clip? A reporter asked JaVale McGee if his mom is still alive. Uh huh. That was weird. Uh -huh. He was like, yeah, she is. It could have taken you two seconds because she played in the Olympics. Yeah. Is it uh, Jeff Ireland? Is your mother a prostitute? Yeah. Whew. That was a tough one. Uh, but yeah, the Olympics are here. I don't know. I'm. The time zones fuck me up. I also, yep. uh, I'm just going to say this. It sounds very stupid to say, but I don't trust whenever it says live in the top corner. I still don't trust it. No, because I just some, assume they're fucking Because sometimes it's not even live. It, right. The, the live is not actually live all the time. I've got a, a number of Olympic gripes. Number one is uh, they always start the opening ceremonies like five days after the Olympics start. Yeah. So you know how, how college football does week zero, which yep. we love. Uh, the Olympics go two steps further, and they have day negative two, yeah. day negative one, day zero, and then day one. Because there's that. some sports that they need to play a lot of rounds. I think softball started on Wednesday. Yeah, but why not just have the opening ceremonies start it's before those question. games? And then they always end after the closing ceremonies. Yes. There's always like two events that are like the Battle of New Orleans, yeah. where you have like them finishing out the competition after the event is officially closed. Yes. Um I don't know. I, I I guess I have Olympic fever. Oh, I do. I, too. I, I do too. I, you know what? I'd would say my Olympic. It's a mild fever. It's a ninety nine point five. I'd I could go to work. Yes, I yes. go to work with this fever. Listen, I I would not mask up if I was feeling symptoms Correct. of Olympic Olympic fever. I think um, I would also like to see more of the superimposed flags in the swimming lanes. Yep. During the swimming events, I miss that rowing too. The rowing lanes are really cool because it's so you know a lot of water and they're just uh -huh. whew, they're going right over their flags. Kind of disrespectful. I don't like the earbuds on the skateboarders. Yeah. I don't like that a lot. You should not be allowed to, unless you're listening to the Tony Hawk Pro Skater soundtrack, which I assume that they're just listening to the, the, the beginning of Superman by Goldfinger every time yep. they start. Unless that's what they're listening to. I don't like it. I w I'd like to feel like, I don't know, if you're running a marathon, you're not allowed to have earbuds in, right? No, I don't to think so. To distract you? I don't know what they're doing. I, I, I also think they, they've completely bastardized skating like they do one trick and then they judge it like give me the full two minutes you know going around trying to get the fucking the the tricks off i don't know i just i'm not a big fan of it i think they should have sharper swords and fencing yeah like give me an element of danger there should be death yes death and not yeah. not death but like maiming yeah all right what's this tweet you just sent us how does this guy getting to tweet it this is not right Oh, they fucked up the uh, beginning of the triathlon. It's Everything like the Tour sucks. de France, yeah. Yeah, and and 
and and no fans. I can't go back to no fans. I just I need fans. So I, whatever. I also Olympics. think that, that skateboarding should include getting away from cops. They've kind of they've sanitized skateboarding yes. a little bit too much. Where they're wearing like polo shirts and nice pants and athletic shorts. Give and they me, all dress the same. Yeah. Yeah. If you land an ollie and no one's wearing cargo shorts, did it ever really happen? Oh yeah, they got cargo pants on right now. I need to see like Italy. actual like Stussy baggy shirts. Yep. I need to see some chains. I need to see police officers. No, no, rent a cops. I need to see like a rent a cop driving around in a golf cart trying to arrest all these yes. kids. Yes. By the way, three on three, they should call your own foul. There's yep. no reason there should be a ref for three on three. Mm, I do love how it's ones and twos though. Yeah. Which makes the two point shot. That's that's in that clip that you put out. They're all just trying to. No, I didn't put out a clip. Oh no, what clip? It got the clip it got Billy taken put out. down forever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, three on three, and they should really, like, why not have one on one? Why not have four on four in a way too small of a gym mm -hmm. where there isn't even a three point line in the corners? You know what? One of my favorite parts of the Olympics so far has been there's this kid, this, I think he's 20 years old from the United States. He was competing in the rifle competition, mm -hmm. the shooting competition, and he was hitting, like, close to bullseyes every time. And when you shoot in the rifle competition, you have, like, you look like a cyborg. Yeah. It looks like you're wearing Google Glass and, like, a mirror over your eye and all this shit. It, it, that, to me, should go also. If you're shooting a rifle, we, there's no need to bring a mirror into the situation. You have a gun, and then you have a target, and that's it. Yes. And the kid from the United States, he won in dominant fashion, and then he was pissed off because he didn't win as much as he wanted to win. And he looked like he was going to shoot everybody Ooh. around him. And he had a gun. Like, people were scared walking past this psycho kid. Oh, man. All right, so Olympic fever. I also wouldn't mind if in the skateboarding they just had one guy who was way too old who was just buying beer for everyone, and that was an Olympic competition because I assume every skate park has that. That would yeah. be a nice wrinkle. Like a creep? Yeah, yeah, just a creep. Just a resident creep. Uh -huh. And who could be the creepiest creep? That wouldn't be a bad <laughs> a bad Olympic sport. I mean, if we're going to go, if we're going to do this silly shit, let's go all the way. You, did you know that breakdancing is an event? Yeah, I think it's not there yet. Oh, so it's like next Olympics? Yeah, yeah, yeah break it's next dancing? one. They, 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 so I think the IOC sits down before the Olympics, and because I know lacrosse had the same thing. Lacrosse is back. For the 2024 games, mm -hmm. not not back right now. Oh, and also the Russians. We're not allowed to say the word Russia. It's really? not. It's not the Russian team. It's what is it? The Russian Olympic Committee. Ah. So they, they're not wearing the official uniforms. Because they all did steroids. Yeah. yeah. ROC. ROC. Yeah. Rock Nation is what yeah. they should actually call them. Yes. Okay. So uh, all right, that's our Olympic talk. We have more coming up. We have the Mount Rushmore of it's the official title is Mount Rushmore of events. Sports we could meddle in, maybe. Uh, we will do that after our interview with Pat Connaughton. Let's talk a little uh, some other sports. So Aaron Rodgers, will he, won't he? There's a big, uh, I don't know, like it, I don't even know if it was real, but uh, essentially a bunch of sports books took down the Packers' win total because they thought Aaron Rodgers was going to retire. Then he puts up a picture of Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, uh, and so does Devontae Adams, which I guess they're trying to say the last dance, which would mean they would both show up. But then what is the last dance for Aaron Rodgers? Losing in the NFC Championship game? Like, what? It, they, they're not going for their sixth title. Let's run this back one more time where we disappoint everybody. Let's try to lose as as the number one seed again. Yeah. Let's, let's come back and then have everybody at the end of the regular season talk about how I'm the best quarterback in right. the NFL and how you're the best wide receiver. And then that's it. That's their last. That's dance. it. Let's that's just the do last it for dance. one more year. Okay. I'm telling you, I think, I think Aaron might go off the grid. I hope he retires. I hope he finds peace. I think he will. I I think if I were to put money on it right now, it's like 30, 30, 30. 30 percent that he retires to host Jeopardy, thirty percent that he plays the and, Denver Broncos and acts surly. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably for the Broncos. Mm -hmm. And then the other thirty three percent or whatever is that he just like goes and lives in the mountains of Peru. Yeah. And we don't hear from him every every like six months. He'll put up an Instagram post, being like, "Look at me, I'm in a market somewhere." Yeah, I've long try, hair. Come try to find me. He'll probably do something crazy like buy an actual Waldo sweatshirt. Yeah. And then take a picture of himself, upload that, and then boom, back to the little ayahuasca hut. I just want to have this on the record. So the takeies are on Wednesday. Everyone get ready for the takeies. Uh, unbelievable. We just finished taping it. Blake of the year was exceptional. So get ready for the takeies on Wednesday. We are on vacation this week. We will have three shows, so don't worry about that. But if Aaron Rodgers does show up to camp as planned on Wednesday, 
Just remember, when you treat me mean things, I'm on vacation. Yeah, he's trying to take. He's trying to unplug for his mental. So don't health do that. Don't right do. Now. Don't treat me. Respect. You know what? My time off. Respect, I don't get yeah. much. Listen, he's with his family. He's being a dad. Yeah. Right now. Don't so, tweet me mean things. And if so, he doesn't show up. I'll take a break from vacation. So tweet it to me, all the mean things that you would say, and I'll copy Big Cat on the ones that are most relevant. Please don't. Please don't. Tweet I'm gonna, it to me. I, I'll filter he's gonna them show out, up. and I'll make sure that you only see the ones that are the meanest. He's going to show up, and it's going to suck, and whatever. I'm on vacation, so don't do it. Don't do it. Um, all right, what else? We have uh, – I, I just got to give a shout-out to the New York Yankees. They're, they are inventing new ways to lose. So Thursday night we saw them with four – Four pass balls uh, to well, lose a game. I think two of them were wild pitches. Two were pass. The catcher looked like he was trying to catch a butterfly. Yeah, he, like he had. Uh, those two have never worked together, never, right? Never. They met earlier that day. Never. They, they have to. And then today they had a no hitter going into the eighth, up four nothing, and lost five four. Yep, that's tough. That's. And then Aaron Boone was like, "We faced adversity before." That guy does Aaron Boone have? Does he have anything in his head? I feel like he's a complete robot. What? Yeah. Why? Why do people still think that Aaron Boone I don't is think anyone capable does. of being I don't, a good nope. manager? I don't think anyone does. Well, we have Game two, seven. Game seven. We have Aaron, two Yankee fans. Aaron fucking Boone. Does anyone still think that? Quick straw poll: fire him or or keep him, Billy? I think we should fire him. Okay. Jake, this is the big one. Boone out. Jake never calls for another man's job. Yeah, I don't think it's the Yankee way to. Uh, can someone in the middle of the season? So I'm not expecting. I mean, George Steinbrenner fired Billy Martin like seven times. At least from what I can rem remember, they don't fire a manager midseason. I'm pretty sure they got rid of Joe Girardi just because he had braces but as they? an adult. Do you think they should? I'm not at a in a position to say whether they should or shouldn't. God damn it! Jake. I just don't understand how you let him throw the third wild pitch. Like the first two, like take him out. Like the guy definitely was not in any position to be on that mound. Or the fourth one. Yeah, yeah. The third, yeah. Much less get to number four. He should not have been throwing number three. But that, honestly, that was a very fun inning to not watch. But we were sitting here in this room while Frank the Tank narrated what was happening. Yes, singing wild thing to us after every single wild pitch that he threw. Damn, I just felt bad for the guy because everyone was shitting on him, the pitcher. Listen to you, Billy. Wow, getting a little soft. I think they like they tweeted. Have, they immediately sent him back down. Yeah, to yeah. yeah. Big have Yankees fans lost it. I think like, so. lost that edge. I think so. He just shouldn't have been in that situation. Hmm. That's I mean, Boone. he's 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 a moron. So I I don't know what else to say. It's incredible what he's doing. Like the way they're finding ways to lose. It's it's unbelievable. I'm enjoying it though. I am too. I mean, Pinstripe Dan only shows up in the playoffs. So me too. I I don't care for the Yankees. I don't care about the Yankees right now. Um. All right. Anything else in the sports world before we get to who's back? Anything else? Any other takers? trying to think there wasn't much else going on this weekend lacrosse was off baseball happened it's game week mm -hmm. game week jake is going to be announcing the game on saturday night get excited is that on the wow cock? that was excitement guys jake is that on the damn cock? it is on peacock yes okay it is on, on the jake cock. will be on the cock on saturday night wow exciting are you getting the cock before the usa basketball team or afterwards I got to see the rest of their schedule. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably don't want to follow that up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Deshane right. Bowes out of the Olympics. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Holy Thought, shit. Billy, listen, you called it. Thoughts and prayers. Billy called it. Thoughts and prayers to, co to COVID, which has to spend the next week with Bryson DeChambeau. Do you think he actually has COVID? No. He just doesn't want to get tested. Like you said. Mm -hmm. You said the two longest drivers in the, in the PGA, Bryson DeChambeau and John Rahm, both have COVID. Interesting. Hmm. And didn't hmm. John Rom just have COVID like two yes. months ago, right? Correct. Correct. Hmm. But spin zone, guess who's back? Patrick Reed, bitch. Yeah. Patrick Reed Captain and Captain America. And his wife, who will probably be catting for him or at least tweeting on his behalf. Mm hmm Very excited to see Patrick Reed represent our country at <laughs> the Olympic Games Captain? on the international stage. Oh, imagine I would imagine that they don't have a shirt in his size. Uh, well, no one has a shirt. Right, so this is going to be great. He has to get them prescription made by yes. like a pharmacist. Yes, he does. All right, pick Captain America. Okay, let's do who's back. Then we got an awesome interview with Pat Connaughton. Uh, we did like 45 minutes with him. It was great. And then on the other side, we're going to do our Mount Rushmore. Uh, who's back of the week is brought to you by our friends at the Cash App. Cash App is back. The stock market, investing through Cash App, buying and selling Bitcoin, 
Download the Cash App right now. Enter referral code Barstool. You'll receive $10, and they will send $10 to ASPCA when you download Cash App from the App Store or Google Play Store today. The Cash App is back. Enter that referral code Barstool. You get $10 off or $10 for free, and $10 goes to the ASPCA. So do it right now. The Cash App. Who's back of the week? Henry. Kanye's back. Yeah. So on Friday, or th- I think it was Thursday night when we were recording, he had like a big album listening party at the uh, Falcons Field, whatever it's called, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, and then it was the album was supposed to come out Friday. He apparently opened a studio inside the stadium and right after the like concert has been working on the album and just staying at the stadium. And there was a, a soccer game there on Saturday and he was just like walking around. Yeah, I saw that. With pantyhose. Yeah, with pantyhose. So he can, Kanye West can just basically do whatever he wants. Meanwhile, meanwhile, everyone's just freaking out, like wondering where the album is. And then he just showed up at this game with pantyhose watching soccer. It would be very relatable, though, if Kanye West, like, told everybody, hey, my album's coming out this week, and then completely spaced and forgot to do any work on it. Which is probably what happened. Yeah, and so now he's just like, okay, shit, how how quickly can I put an album together? The good news is it's not going to be worse than his last weird album. Right. I good, love the Life of Pablo. Yeah, Life of Pablo is great. The last album that he put like, out, that was the Christian. Yeah, rock the only album. good song on there was the one he did with Kenny G. Yeah, which is just the most bizarre thing to say. Although ever. he does have a song with Jay Z on this one, right? Yeah, I and, think it's more of a normal album. Okay, all right, so let's have it. I know. Please give it to us. Drop the drop the album. Drop the album. Do the album tweet, Kanye. All right, that's it. That's it. Okay. Good. Okay. Who's back? Good job. I, I was one? actually I was confused because on, back, on right? Friday. I pulled up Spotify. I was like, time to listen to the new Kanye album because everybody was like, it's coming out tomorrow. It wasn't there. I thought that it was like on one of those weird streaming services that only yeah. like psychos subscribe to. Yeah. So I'm glad to know that I'm not I'm not too far behind on nope. it. Nope. Nope. My who's back of the week is Dexter. Ooh. Dexter's back. You guys remember Dexter? Never Ma- watched it. So it had maybe the worst ending of any television series of all time. And that's including The Sopranos where it just cut to black when Tony was sitting in the diner. And then that guy walked in and it looked like maybe he was going to shoot him. Um, it's including that one. Yep. Dexter, the finale of Dexter. People still get mad at us for that shit. Spoiler yeah. alert about Dexter. Well, I, yeah. What, what do you mean? show came out 15 years ago. Yeah, 15 yeah, but years. People, you know, I think uh, we have younger listeners like myself who didn't watch it in real time were too young. And so they're like, what's the good show that I you should, should have watch? should have been born Sopranos. Yeah. So then they start watching it now, thinking that they can just watch it willy-nilly because well, no one's going to spoil it because no one's that big of an asshole. We, and we, then <laughs> they listen to a sports podcast, and all of a sudden the show gets All right, wait, what's, where's the line? What can I not spoil here? Can I spoil the ending of Jurassic Park 1? Can well, I spoil the Bible? Like, you know, it had what a bad spoil, ending, Hank? and then not say exactly what happens. Like, maybe you can, like... What you used to do with me before you just turned into blatant like assholes, where you'd kind of imply, <laughs> you kind of like would imply spoilers, but right. not tell me, and then right. it just turned into you just telling me exactly what happened. Well, right. I mean, Bobby Balakava gets shot in the train. Balakava, you, you, you knew that one, Hank. <laughs> uh, but the ending of Dexter was way worse than Sopranos. If you haven't seen the ending of Dexter, spoiler alert. Um, but it's not really a spoiler because you're actually privileged if you haven't watched this. He just walks off into the woods and becomes a lumberjack. And that's that's kind of badass. No, but everybody hated it. Everyone that's seen, that watched uh, all the se- seasons of Dexter hated the ending of it. They're finally, like, six years later, eight years later, however old it is, they're like, hey, we fucked up. We're going to bring it back. So Showtime is bringing Dexter back. And I'm excited about it because I, the first two seasons of that were awesome. Um, so if they can figure out a way to undo... They'll pr- you know what? Even just do the thing where you're like... It was a dream, and have him wake up mm-hmm. in the first episode and be like, he never actually walked off into the woods. That would be fine by me. Okay. Uh, my who's back is uh, Fake Love. So Fake Love is back. If you saw, uh, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez had quite a weekend. It's J Lo's 52nd birthday. And then there was a picture that came out that uh, Ben Affleck just palming her ass, which I guess was a throwback picture because that happened like 15 years ago. It's which, like when Eric Musselman does the pictures. Yeah, of, right. Yeah. But it was both of them. Oh my god, that guy just ate shit. That was awesome. Holy fuck. In cycling? Yeah, he ate it, dude. He just hit his brake and went over the curb. That's awesome. That was so sick. I wish you could see a replay. Oh, I'm going to clip it. That was, that was, you can't, do not post it. Do not post it's it. It's just for private use. Do not post it. Send it to me for private use. That was Public fucking my phone for private awesome. Use. He went face first into the curb. <laughs> Hope he's okay. Uh, okay. It's fake love because it's all publicity stunt. The fact that they're remaking old pictures, 
They don't actually love each other. Imagine doing this. Imagine having a relationship that is all for the tabloids and for people to talk to you as, you know, a couple and Benefer and all this. It's disgusting. It is. Like, can you it's ma- gross. Imagine if, if you were in a relationship with Jennifer Lopez and right. all you were doing it for was just to get into page six. Right. Just to have people talk about you and be like, oh, look be at like, them. Oh, he's not such look a weirdo at, after yeah, all. Yeah, look at J-Lo and A-Ra. I, yeah, I mean, I, J-Lo I, and Ben, ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Yeah. Like, it's fucking bullshit. It is bullshit. Bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. So, true love is dead. Fake love is alive. Who's back of the week? This sham of a relationship. All right, this cyclist is going downhill. Dude, he just ate shit. The, the so road turns, hard. but he doesn't. He didn't turn. He didn't this guy see doesn't it. turn there, at all. In his defense, there was no sign. There was no <laughs> sign saying, "Hey, you might want to take a right here." Oh, that's awesome. All right, who's back of the week, Jake? Yeah, Yasiel Puig is back. He is in the Mexican League, a, a team of El Aguila de Veracruz. And he got hit by a pitch, and there was a brawl. So, he's back in the mix. All right, so he's back doing Yasiel Puig shit. Yeah. Exactly. What, happened, what happened with Yasiel Puig? Because I feel like he was, he was about to take over the world for, like, two seasons. Yeah, and then he just started striking out, I think, and not being good anymore. But he he's got awesome April. arms. Got yeah. awesome arms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, there so. was something with, like, wasn't he... There was like kidnappers or something. Someone tried to extort them. It's Uge Urbina. No, again. no, there was an ex- no, no. I know Uge Urbina and the machetes and shit. Something happened with someone's trying to extort them. Uh, either way, Billy, what's your yeah. who's back of the week? My who's back is Tate Martell. Oh, of mm. QB one fame. So yes. Turns out Tate Martell has two he- years of eligibility left, which he is using at the University of Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh. So uh, he Run was. Reps. Yeah, he was committed to Ohio State. He then flipped to U Miami, where he didn't see any playing time and tried to play wide receiver, and he is now transferring to University of Nevada to hopefully start his quarterback and continue his career. Let's go. Yeah, I always like it when wildcard quarterbacks end up going to wildcard schools. Yes. That Mm -hmm. makes it seem so much cooler. Yes. Okay, so we're rooting for him, huh? I actually am. I mean... Yeah, why not? Doesn't really hurt me to root for him. (laughs) True. Right? Yeah. No time out of my day. Kind of electric. Right. But we'll see if he's actually good. Um, Okay. Good who's back, everyone. What do you got, Jake? Did you find the extortion? No, there was also something that I should have uh, involved. It's new team names, the Guardians. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a yeah. Big thing. That was from Friday, right so after we started I, recording. So when it got so. announced, I was like, "Well, this is lame." And then about an hour passed, and I was like, "I don't really care." Guardians works. Yeah. So the Guardians, it's not a bad name when you take into account that those giant statues on the side of their bridge are called the Guardians of Cleveland or the Cleveland Guardians, whatever. Yeah. Those are cool statues. Right. I like to, and I'm not even a statue guy, but those are cool statues, so I get it that way. I just always think, like, this is, well, two things. One, the Spiders is just such a cooler name. Yeah. I wish it was. But I get it I because it, it scares kids and all that shit. And uh, then the other thing is, this is just a look into the future for when the Washington football team eventually gets a name. Everyone's going to hate it, no matter what it is. But then you realize, uh, I don't really care that much. And you also realize there's a t- ton of team names that are equally as stupid. They just came way, way long ago. Yes. Like yeah. The Utah Jazz is the dumbest name in sports. Mm-hmm. It really LA is. LA Lakers. The LA Lakers. Yeah, I mean, the, there's just a bunch of dumb... Like, if if they came out right now and they say the New York Metropolitans, people are like, what is... What? Mm-hmm. What are we doing here? Like, if it was just the Boston Red Sox? Yeah. The, 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 the Knickerbockers? Mm. There's so many team names. You're like, this doesn't make any sense. So, I'm in on the Guardians. Sorry for those tweets. Had to get the tweets off though. Isn't there? Is there any other teams that have that name? The Guardians. Yeah, it was of the, the Galaxy. It was the XFL team. Isn't there like a handball team or something? Oh yeah, who cares? Yeah, who cares? Is there? I bet you the Cleveland. Oh yes, oh yes, good call, Hank. Yes, we should at least bring this up. Uh, there's a handball team, and Ravel, in his infinite wisdom, did his. Uh, hey, look at me! I was able to do a search and found out that. Uh, the it's a roller derby team. For, yeah, it's a, team. yeah, the former Cleveland Indians didn't didn't secure the Instagram handle or whatever. And then Pat McAfee uh, tweeted out a picture of them, a team picture, and Ravel was like, look, it's two women on the team. There are five women on the team. Three of them are maybe different-looking women than... I don't even know what... No, they're women. Yeah, they I saw just, it right no, away. No, they're women. I was like, that's five women. I looked at it, too, and honestly... They just I, have short hair. That's the only thing. I, either Ravel only looked at the left side of the picture, 
Or he just doesn't know what women look like. Yeah. Which what a it, wild. That is a possibility. Hold on. I want to watch this clip real quick one more time. All yeah, right, watch so the clip. He's going, of the, he's, of the going, he's, going, he's going, he's going, he's going, he's going, he's going. It's like a sleeping big daddy. And yeah, he forgot to turn and oh, fuck. Boom, ate shit. Yep. Oh, he actually might have gotten really hurt. Listen, you got you to gotta know how to turn if you're biking. Okay. Two all things right. you got to know. Hopefully he's okay. Thoughts and prayers to that guy. Uh, all right. Before we get to Pat Connaughton, Chevy, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Silverado is strong, advanced, dependable, hardworking. Silverado is dependable like the people who drive them. The design is big, bold, and commanding, and this truck turns heads. A partner with grit and determination. Anything is possible, and Silverado is a partner in that. Tailgating, hauling, towing, off-roading, moving day, helping out your friend or family member move, road trips. Chevy Silverado is the truck. If you're thinking about owning a truck, Chevy Silverado is the truck to do, to buy. Uh, show up, whisper PMT, or take into a salesperson's ear. They will give you $100 off your new Chevy Silverado. Everyone's now, it's a ripple effect across the studio of people watching this guy eat shit. I'm going to watch it one more time. Uh, the strongest, most advanced Silverado oh, ever. I'm going to watch it. Chevy screen. is the best. You know what would have helped that guy? If he was in a Chevy Silverado, not on a bike. Oh, so, I got the big screen going now. Silverado, strong, advanced, dependable, hardworking. Chevy Silverado, the best truck ever created. Okay, here he is, Pat Connaughton. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. He is an NBA champion for less than a week now. It is Pat Connaughton. Uh, let's obviously start there. Uh, one, have has the party stopped? Has it slowed down, or is it still going? I hope it's still going. But how's how is like the last couple nights been uh the party never stops so you can appreciate that but uh the last few nights we've been able to get a little more r and r rest and recovery um keeping it a little bit more low-key okay okay and now has it uh you've been i assume you've been introduced a few times now as nba champion that's got to be pretty cool has it like have you had that moment where you've been able to let it you know set settle in and be like holy shit i got a ring i'm part of history no one can ever take this away from me I'm an NBA champion. That's how you introduce me for the rest of my life. <laughs> I actually, I haven't had that particular moment. I would say, uh, you know, some from the text that I've got and some people that have just called me champ now moving forward or claim they're going to, uh, it started to set in, I'd say each and every day that kind of goes by, it sets in a little bit more what we did. Um, it's unique, right? Cause like you win an NCAA championship, it's one game, it's one night. Like that's where all your eggs are. An NBA championship, it's a two month process. You got to go through every single round. You got to go through all these different things. So, the actual culmination of that night, uh, it takes a minute for it to set in because of the entire journey it took to get there. Yeah. W would you say that this is the toughest NBA championship to win of all time? I mean, look, we played the Brooklyn Nets in the second round. Uh -huh. They got three superstars, they got three MVP candidates. I think um, it was definitely one of, if not the hardest. We started off with a team that we owed revenge to, uh, and then the Atlanta Hawks are a good young team. You know, they got some, some good young talent and the Phoenix Suns are obviously a great team. So I'd say it was one of, I think yeah, obviously the, not having to go through LeBron helps a little bit. Yeah. Well, also the Nets have four superstars. You're forgetting yeah, about Blake, Blake Griffin. Griffin. Yeah. Oh, good call. Blake Griffin. I thought you were going to give the nod to my guy, Joe Harris. Yeah, also Joe, Joe Harris, Harris as well. Yes. He had, also a, Joe he had a great playoff. It is crazy though. You mentioned it. Like <laughs> it's, it's crazy to think, how much time has passed because I look back at like game one of the entire playoffs and I thought to myself, like you go to overtime against the heat. It's like, Oh, the heat are going to be a problem for the bucks again. That feels like 10 years ago. I'm sure it's the same for you. Uh, like throughout the entire two months, did you go z zero dark 30? Were you just locked in? No social media, like basically eat, sleep and you know, basketball all the time. Yeah, I actually went zero dark thirty this entire year. The Whoa. last social media post I had was right before our first game in Boston, my hometown. Um, I guess there was one aside. Uh, Coach Bray got a little bit of flack at one point in time. I had to show him my support, but that was a quick sign on, sign out. But I went zero dark thirty the whole time, and uh, maybe maybe LeBron's onto something. It seemed yeah. to work. Well, yes. so so what's your burner then? The bra oh, I don't have a burner yet. I'm not that technologically advanced. I think I, now that I'm an NBA champ, I should probably figure out a burner. We should take some like burner account username, uh, you know, suggestions. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think you definitely should have a burner. You're at that point. Not Matthew Delavadova should be your burner Ooh. handle. 
<laughs> what? Yeah, Delhi. I played with Delhi for a year. Yeah. I mean, that would be a pretty good one. Or I could just – you think PC Burner would be too obvious? PC Burner. What about your – I don't know if anyone in your entire life calls you this, but on basketball reference, your nickname is Vanilla Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> actually heard that i've never been physically called that by anybody so i don't know where it came from I, yeah uh, those are the type of nicknames you read it you're like there's no chance anyone calls you vanilla thunder <laughs> you know i kind of thought you were gonna add uh at least from what i heard i thought you were gonna add vanilla thunder with the big stat line on game six because i heard i got a little bit of a chirp dude no that wasn't a chirp that was the bit you won my big heart of the game i okay so this segues to a question i wanted to ask you because um, there were, you know, you're, it's a weird situation because you're, you're an incredible athlete. We want to get through, like, we'll talk about your backstory, but you're now in the NBA finals. You're clearly not asked to do a ton offensively. You're doing like incredible stuff on defense and rebounding, you know, eight rebounds in, in game six. How do you like figure out a way to stay engaged at all times when you know that, Hey, going into this game, I may only have four shots tonight. Like I, the, the ball might just not, you know, it might just not be the night where I have to shoot a lot. How do you stay engaged and how are you like able to get rebounds and, and do everything you do that might not show up on the stat sheet? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, uh, on a serious note, I'd say it's, it's the mental side of the game. I'd say a lot of that comes down to the mental side of the game. Obviously everyone sees the physical side of it, the athleticism, the things that, you know, Giannis's transformation from when he was drafted to now physically, um, you see all the shot making, you see the dunks, you see the playmaking, things like that. I'd say the mental side of it is what's I've really tried to progress on throughout this season. And especially in the playoffs, because my role is unique. There's going to be nights where I get nine threes. There's going to be nights where I get one or two. There's going to be nights where I don't touch the ball for the first half, and then I'm expected to make one or two shots in the second half. Uh, but the one thing that has to remain consistent is my ability to positively affect the game throughout, whether it be rebounding, whether it be defense, whether it be taking charges, whether it be just causing havoc, uh, whatever it might be. So uh, for me, I just kind of mentally remind myself, hey, just use the athleticism that nobody thinks I have. You know, use the athleticism throughout the game, find ways to impact, use my instincts, do things that they may not show up on the stat sheet, but it's going to force Coach Bud to continue to put me in the game or keep me in the game because that way when Drew or Giannis or Chris or the guys that have the ball and play make, obviously on a consistent basis, when they do get double and triple teamed, and the ball does get kicked to me, I'm a little bit more engaged to make the shot as opposed to just being cold and, like, firing it up. Right. So a little follow-up. So let's say there were times during the playoffs, like, you get three shots. If you airball one of them or you miss one badly, does it hurt a little bit more? Because that's the mental side that I feel like is really remarkable, that if you have three, four shots a game, and you had more games with, with more – uh, and you miss one badly to be able to be like, all right, I got to keep my confidence up because if you have 25 shots a game and you miss one badly, who cares? You're shooting the next possession down. Right. No, you're hundred percent right. So I'd say it's funny because that's where the majority of my growth this season came from. There was a stretch during the regular season. I played back in Portland where I you know, started my career and I threw the first one off the, you know, backboard and the second one barely hit the rim. And I, realized like I went into a shooting slump for like the next week or so and it was because of that and so how did I look at myself and be like hey how do I grow from this and learn from this because it's going to happen again you know I hope to play in the NBA for 10 12 15 years who knows you're going to miss bad shots you're going to miss them poorly um and fast forward the Atlanta you know game one we lose and I miss a shot that could have tied the game or put us up by one and it was an air ball and I think what I've learned is you got to somehow understand a miss is a miss. It doesn't really matter what kind of miss it is. Can you self-evaluate why you missed it? And for me, the Atlanta one, it was time, score, moment. I let the environment kind of dictate how I shot it. I got too excited for it. I was like, oh, I'm going to make the shot. We're going to win the game before I even shot the shot. Um, so how did I self-diagnose that so that the next time it's just, hey, the ball's coming to me, find the front of the rim, and let it fly. I'm happy you brought up that one because I think I just have the tweets. I don't have, like, what the context is. I just have one from June 24th that just says, oh, no, Pat Connaughton. I think that was that. 
yeah, that would that would probably be it. I mean, yeah. that was probably yeah. one that's good. I wasn't on social media for it. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure the messages, the tweets, the mentions were probably not praising. No, my but name. The, the next mention I have of you is I never should have doubted Pat Connaughton in, on July 14th. Uh, yeah. See, it's all about how you bounce back. Yeah, it's right. all about how you bounce back. Right. I'm looking at your stats here, um, and just about across every category, every shooting category, your regular season stats compared to your playoff stats every season, your playoff stats are much better. Like, you improve as a shooter in the playoffs, whereas a lot of people go the other way. Do you feel different in the playoffs? Do you get in the zone? Yeah, I mean, some of my buddies said I should I should trademark it as playoff pat. It's just a different mentality. Um, mm-hmm. But no, I think – for me, I enjoy those big moments. I think when you're when you're able to calm your mind down and understand, hey, I'm just trying to find a way to win the game. Like that's that's the biggest thing to me. The reason the Atlanta one bothered me a little bit why I was in the gym that night and early the next morning was we lost. If I had missed a shot badly and we didn't lose and we, I found a way to help my team win the game, that's a different story. But um, I just want to try to find ways to win the game. And in the playoffs, that's when it really shows. During the regular season, you know, playing time and – things that coaches look at will be a little bit more statistically oriented Uh, during the playoffs. They're just trying to find guys that can help them win games. And that's where I try to make my mark. And um, I've been fortunate to do so quite a bit since I've been in Milwaukee. Okay. So another dumb question uh, about the mental side of the game, which I think this is why people like our, you know, our show, because we ask these kind of dumb questions. So have you ever found yourself in a playoff game in a regular game being caught being like, holy shit, what Giannis did was so cool and, like, didn't get back quick enough or, like, kind of kind of get caught. Because, like, we're watching it and we're our mouths are on the floor with some of the blocks, some of the dunks. Has that ever happened where you were maybe, like, a split second, you didn't get back fast enough or, you know, you lingered a little too long because he did something so incredible? Yeah, there's a. I got a perfect one for you. There's a, uh, there's a, a picture of it where if you zoom in on my face, you see me, like, it's the block he had versus DeAndre Ayton the other mm. day or in game uh, three, I believe, three or four. Yeah. Um, that was at the end of the game. That was incredible. I The rebound was supposed to come right to me. If you watch the film, it was coming right to me. I didn't move. Thank God P.J. Tucker like was still in in like his self uh, mind. But I just I, I was like he they threw the lob. I thought it was I thought it was done. I thought he had it. And Giannis comes from nowhere and pins it off the glass, hits it off the glass. And it took me a split second to jump back too. And by that time, PJ had already grabbed the rebound, so we were good. That's amazing because that's obviously yeah. one of the highlights of the NBA Finals. You know, that game, that block was just incredible. All right, I'm watching it real quick. That's 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 perfect though because that's the human side. I, you know, obviously you're locked in. It's it's high stakes stuff, but then Giannis is doing stuff that like you can't. It's it's incomprehensible sometimes his athleticism and what he's able to do on the court. Also, Pat, I'm I'm watching this play right now. You need to get credit for an assist on the block because as Aiton is making the backdoor cut, you point at him and you're like yelling at Giannis like backdoor backdoor. <laughs> yeah. And then Giannis does something that's physically impossible for a human to do and blocks that shot. But we need to start keeping track of uh, of assist blocks because that would be one for you. Maybe the greatest yeah, I mean- assist of all time. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm telling them, hey, look, Giannis, I can't do anything about this. You need to go do something about that real quick yeah. because if not, we might lose it. I'm watching this, and it actually, like, it's very, very small. So you you actually Correct. are harder on yourself than, than in reality there. But you can see your body kind of relax for a split second. I think you would have gotten it anyway because P.J. Tucker yeah. might, kind of stole it from you. But that's so funny that it's that block because it really was – I mean, I watched it a million times being like, how the fuck yeah. did he recover and get that high and block it at that level? Man, crazy. If, if you saw if you saw the picture from like, it's got to be either underneath the backboard or behind the backboard in the glass or whatever it is. It's a picture of him doing it and it's at the time of the block or like right after. Yeah. And the still frame, if you zoom in, someone sent it to me, I have it on my phone. If you zoom in, that's where you see me like, that's incredible. And it's now, a so, quick second. But but to give you credit, Giannis, I, I read somewhere that Giannis actually is uh, jealous of your ability to show up to the gym and like jump out of the out of the gym without any warm up. So you guys are like workout buddies, right? Yeah, yeah. So me and Giannis have a nice little friendly competition on who can lift more during certain ec- exercise. Um, you know, pound for pound, who's stronger, things of that nature, and. Uh, I kind of started right when I got in Milwaukee three years ago and 
Uh, obviously, he gets all the credit for being as strong as he is from where he came from. Uh, and when we first got there, I said, hey, look, you deserve all the credit. But don't think that I, I think you can beat me in a weightlifting contest. That's not going to happen. Okay, so we need to redo that uh, the, the picture that went viral in Game Six of they showed Giannis when he was drafted and Giannis today, and it was like he grew seven inches and gained fifty pounds. We need one where like when Giannis met Pat Connaughton and Giannis today, that's all you. Yeah. Like you get credit yeah, for that. Yeah, hundred percent. The last three years, I'm going to take a little credit for. It. Like there's a few. I'll send you guys a few photos. There's a few where after he gets an and one, my big thing is like put my arm up like this, like mm -hmm. how strong he is. And there's a few great still still shots where like his face is like, <laughs> and like it's right at that moment. And I, I haven't I haven't blasted him on social media for it yet. I wanted to make sure we won a championship before I did. But where I said, look, even the MVP is jealous of some of the some of the strength and conditioning guys on this team. There yes. you go. What about his eating habits? Do you think that he was actually able to finish all those Chick Fil A minis? I actually have no doubt he was able to finish all those Chick Fil A minis. I think he loves Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A is his thing, uh, and the man can eat food. I mean, fifty minis is that's just a ton of food. That's more impressive. We were saying than any of the blocks, any of the alley oops, any of the dunks that he's had. If if you're able to put away fifty Chick Fil A minis in one sitting, that's actually just superhuman stuff. Yeah, I mean, his nickname's the Freak. He's the Greek Freak. I tried to get a little campaign going during the playoffs. When I was uh, interviewing on NBA TV with uh, Jared Greenberg, I think, you know, he's the Greek freak. I'm the Irish freak, but it didn't take. <laughs> Unfortunately, Nike stuck with the Greek freak yeah, stuff. They didn't, they didn't add a new line. We can get on that. What about the PC freak? Yeah, we can get well, – the, the Irish freak, we got you. Irish freak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Appreciate that. I assume that. you jump higher than most Irish people. What about uh, <laughs> his – so the, uh, the other part of his freak is the knee injury. After that happens, was he telling you guys, like, don't worry, I'll be okay? Because I still don't – it feels, again, like 10 years ago, but he's up there now with Adrian Peterson. Obviously, Adrian Peterson's tore his ACL, but how he got hurt, how bad it looked, and then how he was able to come back, it still kind of blows my mind. Yeah, I think, to be honest, it's kind of under undersold. It's under-talked about. Like, you look at – the way I mean, you look at what Chris Bosch was saying. They, like they were worried about certain blood clots, things that Chris Bosch went through. Chris Bosch was worried about him playing again, let, or next year, let alone playing again in the playoffs. Um, I think it just kind of shows a his growth. Like on a serious note, his growth as a leader. Like you look at some of the stars throughout the course of these playoffs. Some of them that got hurt, they weren't down on the bench. They weren't standing up. They weren't taking guys aside and talking to them during the games. Like Giannis was doing that throughout those two games in the Eastern Conference Finals, which really helped us. Um, it really helped us get through. And he was addressing the team collectively before the games, um, which I think just speaks to the growth that he's had as a leader, especially vocally. He's always had, obviously, the work ethic side of it. And then just the treatment and the 24-7 things that he was doing in order to try to put his body in a position to heal and get back um and you know be there for game one of the finals and then to put up the numbers he put up during the finals i mean that's coming off of a hyperextended knee that uh you know if he wasn't as strong as he was or he hadn't put in the work in the weight room who knows what that injury actually would have been yeah mm -hmm. so were you were you confident uh like i, I guess how soon after the injury um were you thinking like, okay, he's going to come back. He's not done because as fans, we just, we assumed he was done until next year. Like maybe even going to miss some time into next year, given how serious that injury looked. Yeah. So him and I, because we've lifted uh, obviously together for a few years now, um, he sprained his ankle over the last few years and I've sprained mine once or twice. And the thing that we kind of say to each other every single time when we go over, like, don't feel pain, like be stronger than pain. Like, Stronger people are harder to kill, but don't feel pain. Um, when he was walking off that plane later that night, I was I didn't go over and say to him, I was like, <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned. Yeah, it's I'm okay. I'm a little bit concerned. It's okay like, to feel pain just this one. It's once. okay yeah. to feel pain on this yeah. one. Like, I would feel pain on this one. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'd say probably, like, the next day or two, seeing the progression that he had just in walking. And now, granted, walking is way different than running, playing, going left and right, laterally jumping, exploding, things like that. But um, his his walking improved significantly. So I thought that's when guys had a little bit of more hope. And he said, hey, look, 
we're focused on this series. Do not focus on me. Focus on winning this series. I'm here as a you know voice to help you guys win this series. I'll make sure behind the scenes I'm taking care of myself to put myself in a position to hopefully come back. He's a freak, but you're a freak too. And one thing that I think is under – we don't talk about enough is your performance in the slam dunk competition. Mm. When you jumped over – well, you jumped over Giannis, which is pretty cool, but you also jumped over Christian Yelich. Uh, friend of the show, recurring guest. When you were planning on jumping over Christian, was he like, did they did they tell you like, please don't bump your testicles against my head? <laughs> <laughs> no. So we practiced, and I showed him video of me jumping over a video guy that we have. That's so that he knew I could do it. It was more or less, I would say, the city and state of Wisconsin I was concerned about because I was jumping over the two MVPs. I was going to try to get Aaron Rodgers there to jump over all three of the MVPs. Uh, but I didn't make it to the next round, and so I didn't have that opportunity. Uh, but I would say there was a lot of breath holding from both the Brewers' ownership and management, and then the Bucks' ownership and management. When I was like, "Yeah, this is what I'm planning on doing." It was brought a, down two teams. It was a great outfit, though. You were you were rocking the uh, the white men can't jump the um, the wooden yeah, yeah, yeah. outfit. Yeah. And then yeah, I, I, I was, I, the problem with the dunk over Giannis, I thought was there was almost too much nuance to it. The tapping the ball on the backboard, I don't know if the judges saw that when, when it happens in real time. Yeah, so I would say they didn't see it until there was slow motion in the arena. So being in the arena and afterwards, I knew it was going to be kind of tougher to see. So me and Giannis went over and like kind of pointed. When they replayed it in the arena on the big screen, it was almost like a bigger reaction than when I actually got the dunk down. It was like a double reaction. Like I got the mm-hmm. dunk down and people were like, oh. And then – they showed on the arena and people were like, oh, and like it was the second one that I think kind of helped. Um, but the first one, I think, was the one that had the most controversy because I was the only guy in the first round to get the dunk down on the first try, jumping over Yelich in the white man can't jump costume. And my man D-Wade gave me an eight. Oh, mm, that's tough. Yeah. Have you have you talked yeah. to him after that? No, I haven't. I haven't spoken to him. I told him I, it's going to take me a few years to get over it because he had a fellow Miami Heat guy in the dunk contest that happened to make it to the next round, as opposed to me because of that eight mm. versus nine. Yeah, mm. that's bullshit. Um, all right. So I said we were going to talk about, uh, you know, you you know your path to the NBA. So I think people know, but if they don't, you were an incredible baseball player. You get drafted by the Orioles in the fourth round. Um, you decide to play basketball instead of baseball but actually let me go back so i read that essentially your life changed in one week at an aau camp is that is that like true or is that kind of an embellishment of a story that some writer made up you know maybe a little bit sexier so they could you know have an awesome article um i'd say it was my life in basketball changed in one week for sure i would say baseball and it was actually probably right around exactly 11 years ago this week. It was a week in July. Um, I I never played AAU basketball, really, because I played baseball in the summer. Like, that was my thing. I played basketball all fall, winter, baseball, spring and summer. And um, so I never really got seen for basketball. Uh, my The only offer I had going into that tournament was from a Division two school, Bentley University, for basketball. I had baseball offers from everywhere starting since I was like a freshman in high school. Um, and I told all the baseball coaches, Hey, I just want to wait and see what I can do with basketball. And all of them looked at me like, why? Like, <laughs> right. why? Let's be honest. You're, you're a six, five white guy. Why are you waiting to see what you can do in basketball? Like, let's do this baseball thing. And so, um, I finally got down there, uh, and I went down with an AAU program, Millsex magic from back home. And, um, i got to play in front of some division one coaches and I left there with like 30 division one offers and. Uh, when I really knew like things were changing, uh, like coach Bray, my obviously college coach was like the first guy that really saw me and offered me. Uh, but when I really knew things were changing, we, we had lost the game and you know, in those AAU tournaments, like you're at like the nice facilities until you lose and you're in like some random gym at like the second court isn't even like, it's like torn up. It's like, there's only one court there's dividers and there's those little, uh, crappy, uh, like metal stands. And I got Ben Holland. Coach Bray, Bruce Pearl, I got all these head coaches sitting on those away from the the main event, and that's when I kind of knew, hey, if they're coming to these shitty gyms to see me, things are looking up. That's incredible. So, like you, if that week doesn't happen, you're probably in, you know, in the minors, maybe the majors at this point, 
and your life is just completely different, but you went down, you balled out, and then everything flipped, and it's like now everyone looks at you, Pat Connaughton, the basketball player. It was just like that. Yeah, it was just like that. And I think, like, the funny part about it is, you know, I worked I worked really hard before I went down there, and I got myself in even better shape. But um, a lot of things was – which is ironic and, and and different back when I was there. There wasn't all this high school mixtape. tape. There wasn't as much coverage of the AAU or the high school circuit. So not many people knew who I was unless I went to nationals. Um, but like the first few games in nationals, just during warmups, I did some 360 dunks. I did some windmills. I did some things. And like everyone starts turning their heads like, who's this guy? We've never seen him before. He's doing all this. That's that's nothing. You bet on yourself. Like you wanted to always play basketball. You get the you so you got a signing bonus from the getting drafted by the Orioles for four hundred thousand dollars while you're still at Notre Dame. That must have been hard too to be like, I could go get paid to be a professional athlete right now, but I'm gonna keep playing basketball. Yeah, so I went um I met with all the scouts my junior year, uh the baseball scouts. I also uh you know, I was an athlete in baseball. I wouldn't say I was a pitcher. I was an athlete. I could throw it hard. Um, I had a, a little bit of a control issue from time to time. <laughs> like batters got in the box and they were a little bit nervous because they didn't really know where it was going. Sometimes in warm-ups, I'd sail one over the catcher's head and hit the backstop and come all the way back to me, like things like that. Um, so when I was talking to all the scouts, they were like, hey, look, we'll take a chance on you. There were guys that wanted me at the end of the first round, guys that wanted me in the second round. And I said to them, the one thing I want to do is come back to Notre Dame to finish out my basketball career. You know, Coach Bray gave me the opportunity. I thought it was important for me to make sure that I finished the four years that he gave me scholarship for and finish out my degree and things like that. I was set to graduate a semester early. And the Orioles said, yeah, sure, we'll let you do it, no problem. And the exact quote they said to me was like, we have no problem letting you do it because we know there's no future for you in basketball afterwards. <laughs> Holy shit. And – so I went, I actually went and I took the signing bonus and I played that summer. I played minor league baseball in Aberdeen, Maryland for the short season A, um, the Ar Aberdeen Ironbirds, uh, pitched, probably started four or five games, um, and, uh, then went back to Notre Dame and, and played basketball my senior year and, uh, never ended up going back. Damn. And so I'm reading a quote here from one executive said he definitely cost himself some money by returning to school. I think it ended up pretty good for you. Like if you were to do it all yeah. over again, probably do the same thing. Yeah, for sure. hundred percent. I think the uh, funny part that not a lot of people know was I had the, uh, the Yankees sitting in my living room back in my senior year of high school, offering me a couple million bucks to forego going to college at all to play baseball. Uh, but I felt like if they were offering me that, then that opportunity would still be there as long as I advanced uh, in college. And um, I felt like, it was easier for me in both sports to progress if I was trying to do them on the same campus, working with each coaching staff, not having to fly places to be, get better, but being able to just walk across campus. Granted, it was snowy and negative degrees, temperatures in South Bend. Yeah. yeah. Are we, are we going to hear in a couple of years, like if you have a, a contract coming up, you're like, well, I'm thinking about going to play baseball. As leverage, you yeah, know, how Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson yeah. does that every couple of years. Yeah. I'd like to hear yeah. Pat Connaughton get involved in that too. Yeah, I mean, look, maybe not in a couple of years, but when it comes maybe five or six years down the line when I'm getting to that point, um, there'll be a few stories leaked of me playing long toss in the summers, <laughs> yeah. and you'll see you know, me throwing it from uh, the plate out of over the green monster at Fenway when I'm back home in the offseason and stir up a little bit of controversy. I mean, the Yankees love pitchers with control issues yeah, right now. Yeah, you'd fit in their bullpen <laughs> right this second. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Wait, all right, so I'm mad, though, that you uh, ruined one of my questions because you admitted to having control problems because I did want to bring up the first pitch uh, that you threw oh. out in 2019 for the Brewers. Yeah. So I watched it, and I was like, this guy played baseball? Because you fucking airmailed that thing. Hold on, I'll pull it up for PFT right now. You airmailed that thing. So that now it makes sense, though. So you're basically saying this was – commonplace for you like this 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 didn't bother you because this was a kind of routine <laughs> pat Connaughton warm-up where you might hit the guy who's holding the camera you know 20 feet behind home plate yeah so two tidbits for you one there was our social media girl was holding the camera and she was watching the camera not like the pitch to make sure she got it she did not move an inch and i have her footage it went right by the camera, <laughs> like right by her head. Like she didn't move an inch. She was stoic through the whole thing, like <laughs> nerves of steel. Um, and then the other tidbit is 
there was a time in high school where I hit the first batter of the first four innings to the point where the parents on the other team thought that I was doing it on purpose. And I was like, look, I'm honest. I'm not doing it on purpose. I hit the first batter of the first four innings, and then I struck out the remaining three guys of each inning. So I ended up with 12 Ks after four innings, but four hit by pitches. Um, it was not, I guess I just wanted to pitch out of the stretch. I don't know what happened. That's one of the best stat lines ever. It's actually great because you set the tone right away. Like The next batter that comes up, they're not digging in. They're not crowding yeah. the fight hey, on you. you. Hey, you should have seen the first batter of the fifth inning. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> he was standing outside the box. He was like this. So four <laughs> innings pitched, 12 strikeouts, no hits, four batters hit. Yes. What a stat line. <laughs> That's that. incredible. Yeah. yeah. It, so, was, uh, it was a unique stat line. And one of the one of the hit, H, right, HBPs um, hit the kid in the helmet, and it, I caught it. It came right back oh, to me, and no. I caught it. Oh, oh no. my God. In the, in the air? In the air, yep. Oh, that's boy. ridiculous. Yikes. Uh, yeah, yeah, if I was a parent, I probably would yeah, try I to get you to too. <laughs> but that's good. Now, now we have it. You should have just said that right away after that first pitch because it was a very bad first pitch, and you were a former yeah. baseball player. But now, I love it. You're just wild thing. You're Ricky Vaughn. Yeah, well, you know, when I threw that first pitch, I was still on a vet minimum. I was a one-year team option the second year. I didn't want the Orioles or anybody thinking, hey, his control might really suck. Like, I, like we might have to rethink this whole fourth-round mm-hmm. draft pick thing. I had to make sure that this basketball thing was really going to work out before I really started to, you know, give myself a hard time and show the world what kind of pitcher I really was. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Uh, we, we have a recurring debate on this show between myself and Big Cat on whether or not it would be better to – just be able to step back and just be wet shooting threes or to be able to step up and just throw down dunks in a pickup game. So you're probably the perfect person to ask because you dabble in both. You're, you're an athletic yep. freak. So uh, what, what does Vanilla Thunder say to that? Dunks, for sure. I mean, I've been, you know, one of the best basketball experiences of my life goes back to high school. Um, I went into the Mission Hill Projects in Boston with uh, – this team from Lynn, which were a bunch of guys that I used to play against and played with in AAU. And we played against the Mission Hill Projects team, which had Shabazz Napier, who's a close friend of mine. Um, and there were a lot of Division One guys there. Uh, we walk into the gym. One of the guys on Lynn uh, reached out to me before I got there and said, hey, before you get here, let me know. I'll come out and get you, and then I'll bring you in. So I'm the only white guy in the gym. I walk in. My dad comes with me. Um, a little kid runs up to my dad and goes, hey, like, are you meaning, like, we were the only ones that really looked alike in that gym. Um, Shabazz showed us up. The place goes wild because Shabazz had just gotten back from UConn for the summer. Uh, so he was a year above me. And so we play, we're playing the first half. We're tied. I hit, I think, four or five threes in the first half. And people were impressed. But, like, it was still like they were rooting for Shabazz in the Mission Hill Project. Beginning of the second half, there's a block. I'm coming down the right wing. I got two guys on the Mission Hill team, one who's like, kind of lining me up and the other one who's just trying to come over from the weak side and I go up off one and I put both of them in the room. I dunk on both of them. The game stopped. I got people running on the floor. I got people going nuts. I got people yelling things like this white boy can play. Who is this kid? Like the whole, the whole nine. And so I would say to you guys, the threes were, they were fine in the first half, but we shut down a game with the dunk. Now yeah, in, cool. in my defense, my argument has always been not about, Pat Connaughton level pickup hoops. It's about like Saturday morning, everyone's fat running around, and if someone dunks, it's a try hard move. Like I've I play in pickup games where a guy will dunk, and everyone will be like, "All right, dude." So yes, I would agree in what you just described okay. is a lot yeah. different. Like if you're playing with guys above the rim dunking, yeah, you dunking on people is fucking sick. I you probably yeah. have not played in a in a uh, level of play that I play at since like probably fourth grade. Where it's just everyone's just running around, missing shots, uh, and sucking, and then one guy will show up and dunk, and everyone will be like, "All right, dude, like, come on, really?" So- I would actually, I would, I would agree with you only because I have seen my buddies play. I have gone to a few of the pickups that my buddies play over the summer, and whenever a guy hits a three, especially if it's a few feet behind the line, there's a lot of trash talking going on where it's like, "Oh, he got lucky. He won't do it again." The second he hits a second three, it's like, oh, even a broken clock's right twice a day. Second he hits a third three, it just keeps going, and that's when people start to get pretty animated. And you and, and pick up hoops, like you're playing a 21 or something, and it's like you could you could basically rattle off three wins if you get hot at three. You know what I mean? Like where it's just bang, For bang, sure. bang. 
But yeah, I mean, you, what you described is very cool. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, have you uh, have yeah. you considered uh, like just making yourself available to go over to Tokyo and play in the Olympics and just we need a shooter. We need we need a pack. Someone who can over play there. basketball. Yes, please help. Yeah, for, you for know, your look, country. I was I was buying for my guy when we were still in the final or in the yeah in the playoffs in the finals. I was uh, I was buying for my guy Duncan Robinson to get called up over there. I thought he would have fit in perfectly with them deep threes, but. Um, yeah, if they give me a call, I'd be happy to go over. My guy Dame's still over there or is over there. Obviously played with in Portland. Drew and Chris are over there. Drew had a great first game. Um, but it's a different brand of basketball. I think that's what, you know, it's different than the NBA. There's less spacing. The ball has to move more. People have to move more. It's got to be shared more. It's not as much isolation. And those guys that play in the NBA that then go and play for their countries, they're used to that. They grew up playing that. Yeah, right. can, no, can, can you explain it like a, a little bit more in depth? Because I'm really dumb. So I, I've heard people say that like there's, <laughs> there's more spacing involved and it's a different game. And it's not just like, OK, we have the players who are by far the best athletes in the world and some of the best scorers in the world, like Kevin Durant. Like they don't obviously have anybody that can match up what Kevin Durant's able to do offensively. But like, what's what are the differences in the rules that make it so much more difficult for guys that just play uh, their United States career in the NBA? So the three-point line's closer. So immediately when guys are guarding around the three-point line, you've got five bodies within a tighter space. And that's before you put the offense in there. The key is a little bit smaller. So there's no defense at three seconds. So you can sit in the key for really as long as you want. Goaltending, if the ball's on and the ball touches the rim, you can bat it off. So you'll see guys throw up a free throw. It'll roll around the rim, and you'll see you know, the good European guys jump up and bat it off the rim when in the NBA that might roll in and count. Uh, there's like little nuances like that where when you you can mitigate the athleticism is basically how I describe it to people. Like when you're able to shrink the court a little bit, you're able to give Kevin Durant less space. You're able to give a guy like Dame who's super fast, less space. It's all it becomes more about skill. And then you look at guys like Luka Doncic. You look at guys like Rudy Fernandez, who didn't make it in the NBA, but when he was playing for Spain in those exhibition games. You know, he was killing the United States and Paul Gasol, who's not in the NBA anymore, but he's still having a significant impact in the Euro League basketball and the Olympic basketball. So it just kind of mitigates that athleticism. I think that's where Americans and the United States have always made their bread and butter is we're just a little bit more athletic than the than the Euro than the Europeans. You can also say uh, the roster construction is baffling because we don't have like a true point guard or centers which is very weird like when you play cuz all these other teams have huge guys like they all like you said the 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 point about athleticism you can play a big guy who doesn't move like in the NBA today's NBA you have to if you're a, a center you have to be able to guard anywhere on the court hopefully hit threes and when the athleticism goes down you can play like old school centers a little bit more no you 100% 100% i would say i mean let me ask you guys the question. What, why do you think less guys from the NBA and less Americans wanted to go over? I think it has to do with there's COVID. Yeah. There's no fans over there. I think for some reason, and this Olympics isn't even in a fourth year. It's, it got delayed a year, right? So I think there's a little bit of, hey, we want to get ready for next year in the NBA. We'll catch the next Olympics in you know 2024, and this one's not as important, which is a shame. However, I still believe we should win it based off the talent that we have on the roster. Agreed. So that actually uh, leads me to the question, the debate we had uh, on the show. Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday, did you have a moment where you looked at them like drunk at the party or at the parade being like, come on, guys, look, let's keep partying. Don't get on this flight. Yeah, so the parade was Thursday, and Drew Holiday was on my bus. And I turned around, I took a bus selfie, and then I turned around and I looked at Drew, and my man Drew was sitting there like, I need some rest because I got to fly on a flight to Tokyo tomorrow. And I was like, is it still worth it? Yeah. Like after winning it, like, is it still worth it? Yes. And I mean, both of them, you know, had the same answer. Like Chris Middleton, uh, you know, he's a guy that was just like, I want to be able to compete for an Olympic gold medal. These chances don't always come around. Uh, same with Drew. And I couldn't fault him for that. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're looking at, hey, we won the NBA championship and we got a gold medal in the same year. That's a pretty historic year. That's a hell of a year. So I couldn't fault them for it. 
But when I asked if it was worth it to both of them, they both thought about it for a split second longer than I thought. They Good. Would. I'm happy that you at least brought it up because I agree. Like uh, at the end of the day, playing in the Olympics, that's something special. You'll remember it forever. You got to suck it up for a week in a flight. But I'm happy that you asked him because that's that's what like every like regular fan guy sitting at a bar was thinking like, whoa, I would I just party my face off for a couple weeks and just <laughs> pretend the Olympics didn't happen. Yeah, I did tell them, hey, look, if you want the other way you can look at this is just party and don't sleep. So that flight goes by really fast yeah. because you're just yep. passed out on it the entire time. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yes. That's a good yes. strategy too. <laughs> Very good. strategy. So yeah. we, we saw, uh, we saw PJ Tucker's speech, the dog speech. He wants dogs. He looked like he was having a pretty good time. Do you think that do you, was he partying the hardest or was there some guy who was low key partying harder than PJ? No, I think it's, it's evident. PJ Tucker was partying the hardest. Like <laughs> PJ is one of those guys I mean, obviously, he came to us probably a third of the way through the year. So he's with us for like two thirds of the year. Um, he's one of you know the best teammates I've ever had. He's a guy that he's a great locker room guy. He's a great human being in general. Obviously, the stuff he does on the court is those winning type plays, which you know I res relate to really easily. But just as a human being, he's great, and he's been through a incredible career. I mean. The guy went overseas for a few years to come back to the NBA. So for us to win, he was one of the guys I was most happy for that we were able to get him a championship. And let's just say he took full advantage of winning that championship afterwards. Like Good. he was the guy up the most. He was the guy who I was getting Snapchats from people within Milwaukee that he was still out at a few bars by the time it was over. Like he was, he was, he deserved it. Yeah. Yeah. There was a couple funny, like, just a, a bar that you would never expect an NBA champion to be at the day after he wins yeah. an NBA championship and people like tweeting it being like PJ Tucker just bought everyone at this bar a beer pretty cool move so that's the way to yeah. live it yeah um, yeah and that's the type of guy he is yeah like, he's the type of guy where you know he celebrates things that are worth celebrating and obviously an NBA championship is worth celebrating but he wants everyone to feel the same type of thing and the city of Milwaukee embraced him when he got there i gave him some food spots because he's a few, big food and coffee guy to go to uh and they treated him really well and he wanted to make sure that the fans felt uh the love back that's awesome all right so i had one last question this has been awesome man we really appreciate you doing this um the game seven against the nets i was there i i didn't for a second think that kevin durant had a three there did you think that he had hit a three or did you, cause it actually on the board on the jumbotron, it said three pointer. Did you think your season was over in that moment or were you like, no, his foot was definitely on the line? No, I didn't. So I, I wasn't on the court for that play. Um, I was standing off, uh, but I wasn't on the bench. I was almost at the scores table and I couldn't, I didn't have a great angle. I had a great angle of like the shot, but I didn't have a great angle while the play was going on. So I was with you. I was looking up at the jumbotron, watching the play unfold. And the second he spun and turned around, when I was looking at Jones, I saw his foot looked like it was on the line. So I knew it was a two. And then I looked at the play, and it looked like it was going in the whole way. Like, when he let that thing go, I was like, God damn, this thing's in again. Yep. Um, and to be honest with you, that's why, like, if you put into perspective – a game that felt like you won the NBA championship, it was that game. Like yeah. that game was an instant classic. You had Kevin Durant hitting shots to put it into overtime at home in a, a hostile environment. Like winning that game showed the type of character and, and you know, camaraderie that we had as a team. I, I love it. I mean, I couldn't agree more. That felt like the first moment where it's like, oh, the Bucks are punching back this year. It's not like last yeah. year. They have the toughness well, let me ask that you, you need. Who were you rooting for during that game? I was rooting for Blake Griffin. I, it actually was Fully. bizarre if you were watching it. Like, I only would cheer for Blake Griffin. He had a fucking awesome game. If they had five yeah. Blake Griffins out there, we wouldn't be interviewing you right now because you wouldn't be an NBA champion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, I will say he did play really well that game. Yeah, he, he was a really dog. Well. He was exactly yeah. what P.J. Tucker, he was a dog that whole series. So hey, you, his transfer his transformation from Detroit to Brooklyn was yep. was like night and day. It was like Giannis's rookie year to this year. Yep. It was crazy. Yep. Just need a little fresh air. Some of that famous New York City fresh air, and then, and then all of a sudden he's able to dunk again. Yes, yes. it was great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you: this. Is this has this week been better than your one week in in uh, of like AAU 
legendary performances, which is the best week of your life? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, yeah, I would say this week's been better. I mean, it's not often you can win an NBA championship. There are guys who have great careers that never go through it. It's not often like a guy of my stature who everyone thought was going to be a baseball player um, who actually, ironically enough, I see your guys logo back there. I was uh, at home in summers playing on my buddy's men's league softball team who our name was the Yabos. Oh, um, love it. So yes. we had some good, good stories then, but uh, you know, it's not often the guy that, you know, everyone picked to play baseball was having the type of role that I had in the playoffs, in the NBA finals. And so um, I'd say this week trumps it. I wouldn't say it's by a lot because if I didn't have that week, we might be talking about uh, me just playing men's league softball. So <laughs> Uh, it's something that uh, I won't forget. Just striking, hitting people in in slow pitch, and like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that one, hey, that one, yeah, that that one hurts a lot less. I don't think the parents would heckle me if I was hitting people in slow pitch. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Well, Pat, this has been awesome, man. We really appreciate it, and uh, congrats again. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. This was a lot more enjoyable than when I got my ass handed to me in the spit and chicklets. Uh, NHL video game yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. a year, year and a half ago. Yes. Love it. Pat Connaughton is brought to you by our great friends over at Lightboxer. We have a Lightboxer in the office. It is the coolest piece of workout equipment that I've ever worked out on. It's basically a pad that has different uh, things that you can punch and it tells you where to hit different workouts to do. It's a boxing workout and they have exclusive music licensing partnerships so you can get the newest and best tracks from artists like Bieber, Post Malone, the weekend and much much more if you're sick of your normal workout maybe you're sick of going for jogs you're sick of biking you're sick of doing the stationary bike the stair climber whatever it is give light boxer a chance because it's so much fun you don't realize how hard you work at this thing until it's over it's like you're in the zone in your favorite sport so you can create a profile it tracks your accuracy for where you're landing your punches it tracks your power so you can get better you can compete against friends or you can try to beat your own records it makes working out fun. That's really what you're looking for with a workout. You can be competitive, you can be fun, and you can listen to great music and do a new type of workout. Check out Lightboxer. You go to lightboxer.com slash take. That's L-I-T-E-B-O-X-E-R.com slash take. Get 100 bucks off your purchase. Or you can use the code take at checkout to get 100 bucks off your purchase. Either way, lightboxer.com slash take. Or use promo code take at checkout when you go to lightboxer.com. Okay, let's wrap it up with the Mount Rushmore. We have the Mount Rushmore of Olympic events we could medal in, maybe. And we're doing summer and winter, so it's mm -hmm. all Olympic events. Let's uh, let's let's hit the lottery machine to see who gets to pick, uh, or who gets to decide the order. Okay, who who picks the number first? Why don't you go first, Big Cat? Uh, forty-five. Twenty. Nineteen. Sixty-nine. Here we go. I get it. And we're going, and we're going, and we're going, and we're going, and we're going. 57. Ye me? Yeah, big no, cat. No, tie. No, big cat. Tie. Oh, no, wait. Tie. Yeah, it's a tie. Wow. Price is right. Over is disqualified. Wait, so that Why? gives. Wait, what? Why would you? No, we're not going to change then it. Then we would lose. Jake just, <laughs> Why Jake you do just literally the did the uh, ref and right, went out of bounds on me. Let's go. Uh, it's their ball. Let's go. I'll, I'll re alpha Jake. I'll say Jake goes first and we'll come this way. So we'll go wrap around that way. Okay. So Hank will go fourth. Jake and Billy I go first. I am not going to. S oh, no. That's time traveling. Okay. I was going to say I'm not going to. Okay. It. Yeah. All right. Go for it. I don't it. know what you're going to say. Go ahead. First pick. Go. You go. Go. Table tennis. Okay. <laughs> I thought the easy first pick is handball. Yeah. I absolutely mm -hmm. could medal in handball. I easy. watched again. It is a joke of a sport. It really is but gym class. you. Yeah. On a team, could medal in handball. Okay. All you'd have to do is just do band workouts for your shoulders. Dude. You develop like an 80-mile-an-hour fastball, and guess what? You're automatic. I think that gives you the silver medal in it handball. It is... Gym class. I'm I'm not going to ever lose to Croatia in a sport. No. That's just a fact. No. I will overcome them with my, my sheer mental will. Easiest sport ever. Yep. By far. Uh, my first pick is going to... Well, I was going to do... There's an alternate version of handball out there, Big Cat. 
Uh, it's more, no, there isn't. More, it's a more chill version of handball. But it's not an Olympic sport. <laughs> Yet. You're, no, it's not an Olympic sport. You're talking about beach handball? Yeah, it's not an Olympic sport. It was on the list of Olympics, mm, Olympic sports. Mm, you were probably looking at the all list. It was a youth Olympic sport. Okay, so that's why I'm not going to take <laughs> beach handball. Yeah. Uh, so instead of not taking beach handball, <laughs> I am going to pick pretty standard one for uh, for easiness, curling. Okay. I think if you just gave yep. me, if you mm-hmm. gave me like yes. four years, I could figure it out. Training yes. every single day. Yeah. I like shuffleboard. I like ice. I like being slightly overweight. As far as I can tell, those are the only three requirements to being a professional. Player. I agree. That was I my agree. number one pick as well. I also think because if you're that's a team game too, so it's like let's say you get put into a, a training facility and you're just curling all day every day for like four years. Mm. You would get enough skill, and then you could all if you're playing with two good players or three good players, however many players there are. You could win. I'd yes. just be the broom guy. The broom guy seems like it's a like I love cleaning. Everybody knows that about it's me. So easy, so easy. All right, I have two here. Oof. I will go with pole vaulting. Oh, okay. okay. That's maybe that's like the one hardest of the artists for the that's, world. That's the one where like you're going to get a pole up your butt at some point. You just run. That yeah. is such a hard sport. <laughs> stick the stick in Holy the ground. Holy fuck, that would that's be a hard easier. Sport. Listen, uh, Big Cat, if me and you were both training for four years, I would be no closer, chance. closer to being a pro meddling pole vaulter than you would be to th- be a meddling I don't think so. I know how to player. throw a ball. I you know how to run and dude, hold a stick. I don't think you... <laughs> okay, that's a really hard sport. We, you know what, people we, like die Yeah, in that yeah, sport. no, it's dangerous. You know what we need to do, Hank? We, we absolutely do need to get you out on a track. We With know the the kid who's like the heavy favorite for pole vaulting. He's Swedish. Went to LSU. I, we met him at a LSU tailgate, and like we stayed in touch. Okay, dude, I, 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 hey. we met a fucking Olympian handball player. He looked like an accountant. He came into this office. We interviewed him. Hey, he looked like an accountant. We've we've interviewed Aaron Donald. That doesn't mean I'm going to get Defensive Player of the Year. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. Okay, all right. I'm rooting. I'm trying I'm, to be positive this year, but that's that's a, a bad, hard sport. A bad pick. All right, my number two. What's is- your number two? Boxing? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Billy's got Billy just crossed off boxing. <laughs> <laughs> Surfing. He's like fuck. Surfing. Okay. Yeah. Yes. It's better than pole vaulting. Yes. Better than pole vaulting. Also, surfing is just like entirely subjective. So if you could invent a cool looking trick. Then you might find a, g- a judge who's like, "Yeah, why are you looking good? like that?" I just don't like. I just pole vaulting's hard, pole vaulting dude. Is really hard. But if all like, let's say I just live at the track. I'm training for four years straight. I have a coach. <sighs> all you got to do is yeah. run straight and get the timing down. Yeah, it's okay. scary. Versus it's handball, where you have to be in much better physical shape. No, dude, there are fat guys playing the, in the handball uh, Olympics right now. Also, Hank, the pole vaulting, yeah. there's a, a shitload of upper body strength that's required to. Push it in and then spring yourself over the bar. Yeah, well, I'm going to be jacked by August. So That's true. That <laughs> what what skill do I not have that handballs? Uh, endurance. Dude, the courts are so small. Being able to jump. Okay. Lateral quickness. The, again, they're, the courts are really small. And they basically strength. just walk around throwing the ball at each other's face. It's, it's, it's fourth grade dodgeball. These are things that can all be learned, by the way. Yeah. If you get with an elite speed teacher... And just have you do that thing where you slide back and forth yeah. on your feet for like two days. Also, I could just be one of the fat guys that just throws it hard. Or the goalie. And, and you just throw it at their feet. I would actually, I think I'd be a good handball goalie. Dude, you just got to take some balls to the face. Yeah. I regret picking pole vaulting. No, 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 I don't <laughs> no, want to. No, 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 you guys, I, I do. I just want that on the record. Okay. I'm already. It's just a very hard sport. Yeah. All right, um, is it my turn? <laughs> yes. All right, my second pick, I'm going to go power walking. Is that still a sport? Did don't they take so. that out? I don't think so. Hank, Hank, you don't know. Yeah, I do. I think that pick should stand I, and it should say not a, not an Olympic sport anymore. But it has been an Olympic you should sport. Vacate, you should have You're to, like the Twitter reply guys, not a sport. Yeah, I mean, you should, have to, vac- you should have to vacate that, that I'm on pick. the official Olympic website. I, don't, I do not see it. As of 2016, it was. Let's see. Mm. Get with the, get with what the year times, is it? PFT. Come on. Race walking is an Olympic athletics event, according to people also ask. I don't think it's there anymore. I'm on the official Olympic website as well. I think you just vacate this pick. Yeah, it says there are two race, race walking distances contested at the Summer Olympics, the 20 kilometers. In 2020? And this is Wikipedia for race walking. Is it in this year's Olympics? Race walking is an Olympic athletic event. <laughs> yeah, I think that it I is. I don't see it. 
Does anyone see it? Yeah, I think that it is. Does anyone see it? The International Olympic Committee says the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Marathon and Race Walking events will be moved to the island of there we go. Hokkaido because of its cooler weather. This was in 2019, though. So as of two years ago, it was an Olympic event when they're planning for 2021. You think they forgot? No. No, they didn't. Race walking is an event in the Olympics, and I think I could do it. Oh, uh, all servicemen's. Okay. All right. All right. That was contentious, you have, though. You guys really came at my you throat. You don't on that have one. I'm not very the, long legs. I don't, but they're That's quick. That's like kind of the thing that you need for no, race walk. Not necessarily. You ever see like a dachshund run? That's kind of like not, my, not fast. My tiny yeah, yeah. legs. They, have, they don't go fast. Yeah, but I feel like if I trained hard, enough, I got good calves. I thought there was a whole like big thing that race walking got taken away, and it was like very sad. I think it is a very funny sport. I'm looking at the maybe the funniest sport. Of yeah, all. it is. Yeah. I'm looking at the builds of people that compete in race walking. They don't seem to be super tall. Okay, it still is. I thought they were trying to get rid of it. Please never get rid of it. No, never do it. And All right. It, yeah, this, that's okay. my body type. I'm okay. looking at some race walkers right now. I could dominate. They're very skinny. They're, yeah, but I, I could walk my way into shape. Okay. Uh, all right. I can't believe this one lasted. Bobsled. Just fucking be a, a sack of potatoes in the middle. One of the guys in the middle. Yeah, I had like, that one. Like, what too. the fuck? Sanka Cohen. That's the easiest fucking sport Did in the world. Did you watch Cool Runnings? Yes, yeah, yeah, Sanka. You yeah. have to be fast. They, wait, wait, wait. Sanka was like his buddy, and he Did just you, was on the team. Did you watch Cool Runnings? It was a bunch of dudes that didn't know how to bobsled. They just started bobsledding. But they were actual athletes. But one okay. of them wasn't. One of them wasn't. The fat one wasn't. And you need a fat guy. You to need add a fat to the guy. Sled, he wasn't right? in the middle. But, he wasn't fat, but whatever. Yeah. S dude, put me in the second or third spot. And all I gotta do is lean every now and then. So you gotta specify four man bobsled. Yeah. Not to, there's nowhere to hide in two man bobsled. No. <laughs> yeah, that one's scary. Okay. Um. So this one you actually don't have to be athletic at all, but equestrian sports. Mm, mm, yep. Good pick. Because think too. about it, like you can train a horse. Like yeah. you don't actually have to be that good. Yep. Good pick. Good pick. So. Yep. Good pick. An equestrian tested positive for cocaine recently. That's sick. Really? Yeah. The the horse or the person? The person. Wow. Oh, I, I thought like, it was a. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no shit. The the per, the person did all these crazy horse. Yeah, I was like, they're all yeah, rich people. Yeah. Like oh, Bruce Springsteen's daughter. They we, party. It would be more surprising if she wasn't using cocaine. Yeah. Turns out they do give cocaine to racehorses. Yeah, that's awesome. I looked it up. That's pretty cool. They well, run faster. It's not cool. Don't give drugs to animals. All right, unless you're Billy. You're trying to make I, your I frogs super mm -hmm. big. All right, next, Billy. Um, I was gonna go. Wait, no, it's you, Jake. No, oh yeah, Jake. It's me either or. Um, <laughs> by the way, uh, race walking is under the athletics in the official. Yeah, I found it. So, so the, it the final cool. is on Friday, August sixth. I'm very happy. I thought yeah. for some reason I read a story where they're like race walking. This might be. Is this it? It might be it. They're trying yeah. to get rid of it. They should I just. They should always say that about the stupidest sports. Yeah. That, so that we beg you to make them return. I agree. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with badminton. Okay. Similar to tennis, similar to table tennis. Okay. And do you know what the thing is called? Their ball. Shuttlecock. The shuttlecock. The shuttlecock. shuttlecock. Or the birdie. Which you're going to be on the cock. Yeah. So nice little. I, I think I'd be a good badminton player. Okay. I, I think you'd be pretty good at it, but have you seen some of the experts play badminton? No, it's fast. Badminton? It's, it's crazy. Fast. It's actually yeah. like, it's remarkably violent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. I'll, uh, next one. I get next pick. Uh, sailing. Sailing. I mean, come on. That can't be hard athletically. You can learn sailing. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. sailing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. sailing. It's ninety percent the wind. Yeah, dude, it's sailing. And that's just fucking hold the rope really taut, tie a couple knots, and boom, you have a bronze. We're yeah. not talking about gold, bronze. It depends how rich your dad was. Yeah. If, he, if he made like over five hundred thousand dollars a year, I feel like you are just naturally born into it. I chance. do think that those kind of sports, like sailing, they should eliminate those sports because there's no way that the people like. There are certain sports, handball is another one, where there's no way the people that are like winning gold medals are the best in the world at it. They're just the only ones that fucking do it. I would love to see a movie, or maybe just a real life coach, that takes like a sailing program to an inner city school. Yeah. In high school, and develops their like, best Landlocked. Sailor. Yeah, the best sailors <laughs> in the history of the world. I we're, This is going to be great, because we are going to piss off so many like random niche sport oh, fans. I, I'm fine pissing off oh, sailors. Oh, dude, sailing? Come Wait, at me, sailors. They're come called about, sailors. Come about at yeah. us. Yeah. 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 Jesus Christ. It really is, though. Like it, When I watch some of these sports, I'm like, there's there's no way that these are the best in the world. They're just the people that do it. Like, if you, again, going back to the handball, if you just had our best athletes, we'd win gold every single or time. Or even like... Patrick our, Mahomes would win it every even time. Even our above average, slightly above average athletes. Every time. You could probably take... 
Notre Dame football. Yeah. And they would win. win. Yes. 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 Got to learn how to tie some knots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Easy. It's also like the uh, curling and bobsled. It's, it's, our best chances are teams or we're team sports where it's like you have a good captain and yeah, good, good uh-huh, teammates. Right. You can help contribute to correct, a medal. Correct. Correct. All right, PFT, your next pick. Um, my next pick, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with ski jumping. Ski jumping. Oh, you gotta land though. No, I don't think that you do. Yeah, it's part. I, no, I don't it's think that part, you do. No, 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 no. Because I have actually had this thought. I can't remember when I was having this discussion. It might have been on a rundown. I was like, I'll just bomb it once and yeah. just go full yes, send. that's what I'm saying. And just land and crash, and I'll have the longest one. I'm pretty sure they judge landing. I, I don't know if they and do. And also, you kind of have to go, like, you'd have to go multiple times. So you can't just go once, crash, and, like, break all your bones and be like, boom, I got the longest one. All right, so, one. so there's style. There are style points that are involved. Right. And there's also I've, a target, down, there's also a target that hole. you have to aim for. Yeah. But I feel like I could go full sim one I time. Did, yes. No, but this is, it again. No, the, I, I agree with you because I had the same here's thought. Here's why. I can stand perfectly still. For about 10 seconds while I'm going downhill. I can learn how to balance myself doing that. And then you just do like one of those, like a little spring at the last second. The, and that's my biggest muscle groups are my calves, my ass, and my quads. And I feel like I'm, my body is designed to be a ski jumper. And then I just land however I land. I, I might die. Right. But then I get but a bronze. The, the problem is, I think there's qual- like you'd have to do multiple, you'd have to land a couple. To get to the finals. The good news is, though, you get to train at the sick pool yeah, facility where you, go where into you the, don't have to land. Yeah. You go in the pool or you go in the uh, foam pit. Yeah. That's yeah. sick. I would I would definitely raise some red flags with my trainer, like the uh, like the hijackers. would be like, hey, I'm, I'm calling the FBI. Uh, there's this guy. He only cares about flying. He does not <laughs> yeah, care about landing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would, be, it would be awesome to just go full send once. All right, Hank, mm-hmm. your two picks. It's crazy. I had that same thought. It was like... Two or three months ago, and then someone's like, dude, you know you, like, they do judge how you land. I was like, fuck. Let's go with uh, Skeleton. Okay. Just sit there. Bobsled related. Down. Yeah. Yep. That's it, that's a head first. Head lose, first. Right? Yeah, that's just, a little bit of, like, a, a, a ski jump where you just, like, no fear, full send. Yeah, just turn your body a couple times. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, and then golf. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Same thing. I mean, I feel like if, you know, I was just golfing every day for for my whole life i could i could really get my handicap down and fresh potentially go pro well yeah. no you can go pro right now remember colin morikawa told us that right yeah so you can true. get pro and then become an olympic golfer if you practice yeah. hard enough that is true that's a good pick hey um this is my last one yep all right for my last one i'm gonna go with fencing mm. no no can whoa I switch? can i switch whoa okay yeah, I'm gonna. I'll stay with fencing. I don't want to. I don't okay. want to cause a disturbance. Okay. I feel like fencing is just quick twitch. You just, if you've ever watched a fencing competition, it's not even really a sword fight. It's just whoever swings their sword fa- like first, that person usually touches the other person. Yes. And yes. so I also feel like there's room where you could like cheat very easily in fencing. That's true. Um, I have a question on my last one because I don't know. Like, I want to pick a sport that I think I would actually be able to compete at it's a team sport but they may not let guys do it field hockey no i softball i think i would i would medal in softball yeah sure okay cool. you could you could compete all right, all right. softball i think if you, yeah you just yeah, get, op- my last get a quick yeah. operation and then you'd be mm-hmm. good my uh, not softball. Even. softball not even not softball even. softball is my final answer i was gonna say basketball but i feel like that way you guys would have thrown flags like you'll never make the team which is probably true you never say never. Well, I mean, what you <laughs> just said. Probably true. <laughs> you basically alluded to that with Pat Connaughton, though, saying, like, you've never played anywhere near the type of basketball he plays. Right, well, they, so. yeah, right, right. You, you could fourth also grade say, was the last time. <laughs> yeah. You could also say hockey and then just never get into the game. Right, but I, I, bench, I did yeah. want to give, like, the idea that I, you'd have to actually make the team because the, if we're being honest, the best, maybe not this year, but the best chance of meddling mm-hmm. is on the USA basketball team, right? Yep. Uh, all right, so softball's my last pick. All right, so going off of the idea that you're not athletic, like this is something you can just get to with just like a little bit of practice, this one's going to be contentious, and don't take this the wrong way, but shooting sports, like riflery. Because mm. mm-hmm. like think about it, you don't actually have to be athletic. You so you're have picking riflery. Riflery. Okay. You are a young white male, so yeah. you're like halfway there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You do I go mean, on message boards. Yeah. No. So you're just three quarters <laughs> I knew of the way you guys there. Go, like, it is. Like, like, what do you want me to say? Volleyball? 
Packers. No, it's a good pick. Yeah, you don't I have to mean, say like, any of us yeah. could. I don't think that's shoot. contentious at all. Well, well I knew you guys would make shooting jokes. Well, yeah, yeah. this is a, a podcast. Yes. Yeah. Um, you. The only thing with shooting, though, I think all those. It's like you have to be born with amazing vision. Yeah, you do. It's vision, and also you have to be able to control your heart. Your heart, yeah. which you take way too much pre-workout to be sure. able. to But do think that. about if I don't. If you just go cold turkey, yeah, off, you'd be well, a beta. Then your arms would get weak as fuck, <laughs> and you need a gun because you couldn't defend yourself with your hands. True. But Ma- yeah. Maybe that's the trick: is just to raise the biggest beta that you can find that's completely <laughs> unable to defend themselves unless they have a firearm. All right, here's a question: of all the track and field sports. Which one is the easiest? Pole vaulting. Race walking. That's not track and field, right? Is it technically? Yeah. yeah. Hammer throw. It's field. Javelin. I think that's all harder. No, there's no way so. that javelin is harder so. than, than pole vaulting. Dude, being uh being on a four by one hundred with Usain Bolt. Good point. Um maybe Discus? Uh, uh, triple jump? Nobody really does the triple jump. Yeah, triple Ham- hammer weird. throw. Hammer throw? Yeah. Okay. Just throw a hammer. Which is the one yeah. with the... Oh, the steeplechase. Yeah, steeplechase. No one wants it. That's that's, that's just, just like the, half just not tripping. It's the event that they leave up to the people that don't mind if they get their socks wet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Other ones that missed the cut. I also had diving on there. I don't know. I feel like if you just figure it out and well there's that video of those guys that like couldn't opener. even yeah. couldn't even do the dives right yeah. right i could do that uh, right i had skateboarding just in the event that everybody that competed failed the drug test yep yep Our, Syn- synchronized diving too because if you're just if, yes. again i'm i'm going under the premise of like i'm taking the next four years of my life and just focusing on this one thing mm-hmm. and if me and if me and pft just went to the diving whatever the diving pool every day and mm-hmm. did a synchronized dive, we could figure it out in four years. We worked yeah. on one dive. Right. Yeah. We just fucking right. nailed one dive. Uh, uh, synchronized swimming, uh-huh. definitely. That's part of, you know, just don't, just try to keep up with the team a little bit. Water polo. I was thinking about water polo, but then I remembered that we were at Stu Finder's house and I almost drowned like six times in the shallow end playing essentially water polo with a greased up watermelon. And if you ever see the guys that are that are playing water polo, they're just, they're, they're a different species. Yeah, they're, they're fucked in the head. And they also like wearing Speedos. Yeah, they it's like just, just good beating look. the shit out of each other and like half drowning each other. I would, yeah. They would just not let me on the team for the sheer fact that they're like, okay, this guy's too hairy. I'm, yeah. I'm shocked, PFT. You know, you've you've considered yourself to be a potential professional kicker for the last three years. Yeah. But you didn't think you're good enough to be a professional rugby player? Mm. Well, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that goes into rugby. You got to make the team. Besides, too. I got to make the team. Um, I have too. But much- you think you could make an NFL team, but you don't <laughs> actually think you- that's that's my point. I have too much respect for the sport of rugby uh. to say that I could walk in off the street. <laughs> it's maybe the most challenging sport besides pole vaulting to compete in. <laughs> no, I I I think if you were to ask me if I was 26, you could put me in for like four minutes a game on the U.S. Olympic rugby team against an inferior opponent and maybe we wouldn't lose but right <laughs> but, but right now no absolutely no chance in hell sport climbing sport climbing mm, but i'm huh. afraid of heights um tough. the only other one that i wrote down was i feel like the track cycling like if you just don't crash yeah if the big one hits yeah yeah or yeah or if the big one hits behind like in front of you yeah and you you're the last one standing mm-hmm. rhythmic gymnastics as well i don't understand that sport. do you guys do that one i don't know i have no idea trampoline Trampoline. I was sick at the trampoline I d- when I was I a kid. I know. I always thought the double bounce would fucking tear my ACL. I so hardly scared. ever got injured. Um, all right. That was good Mount Rushmore, boys. Mount Rushmore season is officially back. Uh, all right. That is our show. Do you have suggestions for Mount Rushmore yes. you want us to do? Please tweet at Jake. Jake's going to take a list. Or at the Pardon My Take Twitter handle. Jake's going to start taking a list. Mount Rushmore season. A reminder, Wednesday, the takeies. Get excited. The takeies are here. Uh, numbers to finish. Eight. 99. 69. Wait, I think Ledecky lost. 18. Thanks. You got now, mad at me for silver. spoiling Sopranos. 86. Uh, 68. 99. 37. 37 is the number. First timer. See you guys Wednesday. Take ease. Love you guys. Ants can carry up to...